Now we're moving and we've gotten past our head and neck. Now we're getting to our chest. So here is the portion when we're gonna look at the thorax that includes the lungs and the heart. So when we're looking at our lungs, don't forget to listen or auscultate. We're gonna get our lung sounds. We're gonna see how hard their work of breathing is. Is it labored? Is it fast? What's their pattern and what's their diaphragm doing? Also, when we look at their heart, we're gonna look at what their pulse is like and also any sort of heart tones. So now let's take a look at anatomical landmarks. Now these are meaningful points on the body that are the same in all people. Now this is really helpful in describing maybe where we auscultate the heart, for example. So now let's take a look at some really common landmarks that you might run across. If you take a look at this image, you see the black line running through the middle of the chest. Therefore, we call it mid. And of course, you see it running here through the sternum. All the time we call this anatomical landmark the mid sternal. Now on this next line that you see here, notice that first word you see anterior. Now as a nurse, a nursing student, or any healthcare provider, it's really important that you remember anterior is front, posterior is back. So here we're on the anterior side of the body, so towards the front, and you also see axillary. So anytime you hear that term, think of armpit. So this is the front side anterior axillary line, and of course you have one on both sides, correct? Right and left. Now next, when you see midclavicular, think about mid, and you see that root word there in this, it says clavicular or otherwise clavicle. So if you take a look at this anatomical landmark, you find the patient's clavicle and really just go down the middle here. This is what we call the midclavicular line. And of course, this can repeat on the other side as well. Now taking a look at this next image, we're looking at a little bit different view here. So we had talked about this before. You remember anterior is towards the front. And of course, as you see here, posterior is towards the back. So this is just the other view of the axillary line, so running through that armpit on the back side of the patient's body. Now next, as you see here, this is another way to look at this is the anterior side in comparison of the axillary line as well, running through that armpit area. Now also you see here, if you split the difference between the two, especially when you see the patient in a side view like this, in the middle of the axillary or where the armpit would run, we call this the mid axillary line. Now when assessing the patient's chest and or thorax, palpation's a great assessment method that we can use. Now before we listen or auscultate, we may need to feel the patient's chest and their ribs for asymmetry, but you've gotta be really careful here like you see in the image. So as you can imagine, if you assess the chest and you see asymmetry like this, that is not normal. So be careful when you palpate. Now next, you may see retractions. Now retractions kinda of mean that there's this skeletal-like appearance when you look at the patient's chest meaning you can see the ribs and part of the chest or the skin sinks in, that is not normal. So asymmetry and retractions are not normal. This can mean trauma or the patient's in respiratory distress. Now let's talk about auscultation of the lungs. This is so important. We're gonna talk here on how we actually do the auscultation and perform this. Now please don't forget to compare both sides meaning anterior and posterior, and the upper and lower lobes. So this is really important, and many times you're gonna see this in nursing where you see the nurse just listen quickly and go. Now it's really important that you compare upper, lower, anterior, and posterior because we need to check for what we call adventitious lung sounds. Adventitious is just a fancy word of abnormal lung sounds. So the reason why we want to listen to both upper, lower, back, front, many times you'll actually catch in your pneumonia patients that crackles actually develop in the back and the bases of the lungs. So as you can imagine, setting up and being able to listen to the front and the back, take some strength and mobility of your patient. If they can't do this, you can always just have your patient roll and hold on to the side rail or get assistance and check their posterior lung fields. Now let's talk about adventitious lung sounds, or again, just a fancy word for abnormal lung sounds.
Now just think about if you took your own stethoscope, put it to your chest, hopefully you have none of these, and you breathe in and breathe out. You should just hear that normal inspiration and expiration. That's one. Now, if you hear some sort of popping sound or like Rice Krispie, we call that crackles. That usually means there's some oh, wetness or mucus in there and that's abnormal. Next, you may hear the word of ronchi. This is more really low pitch, more coarse, kind of like a snoring or a moaning sound, and this is also abnormal. Now, you're probably gonna hear ronchi more on expiration, like inhalation out, than breath in. Now, wheezes are actually pretty common, and sometimes you're gonna hear this high-pitched. You can hear this with your asthmatic patients. Sometimes if I run too much, I may start wheezing myself. It's that high-pitched musical squeaking. That's actually abnormal in your patients, and we need to note this. Now, lastly, you may hear the word plural rub. This really just kind of sounds like two pieces of rubber rubbing together. So again, if you take a look at this slide, all of these are adventitious lung sounds. They need to be monitored, checked for changes, documented, and reported to the physician. Now let's talk a little bit further about breathing. So we talked about what it sounded like, but what does it look like? So it's important here as a part of your respiratory assessment that we gotta look at the patterns of breathing they have. So hopefully your patient's just having a normal inspiration, expiration, relaxed, non-labored breathing. But sometimes the patient could have tachypnea, which means their respiratory rate is fast. They're breathing fast. Kind of think about the time when maybe you're exercising and running and your respiratory rate picks up. Now sometimes you can have a decreased respiratory rate, which is the op opposite. Now, sometimes this could be normal for the patient, but sometimes it can be so decreased that this could be an issue. This could be because maybe we gave the patient too many opioids and it depressed the respiratory system so slow, this can be dangerous. Also note any sort of apnea or absence of breathing episodes where the patient just truly stops. There's other different kinds of breathing patterns that are important to note. So these are usually not good signs. So you may hear the word chain stokes. So this is an agile, gradual increase and decrease with periods of apnea, meaning you're going fast, going slow, and then you have a period where you just stop breathing. That is not normal and dangerous and a sign of something else and respiratory distress. Also, you may hear the word Kuzmal's breathing, which is fast breathing pa patterns and hyperpnea, which again, this is an abnormal breathing pattern, all of these that you see on the slide, and we need to monitor.